Hey everyone, this is Eric Vasquez here with a brand new design tutorial for you today from designcuts.com. Now in this tutorial we're going to be using the all new totally extensive textures and patterns bundle featuring a wide range of textures and patterns crafted by industry leading professionals. In this particular lesson I'm going to show you guys how to add textures to a landscape photo in Photoshop. And to do that we'll be using just a few of the glass plate negatives courtesy of Blue Line Design. Now if you're all ready to get started, then fire up Photoshop and let's begin. Now the first thing we're going to do here is just open up our free stock photo from pixabay.com. Now you guys can find the link for this in the written portion of the tutorial. I put the URL over there just so you guys can download it to follow along. Now once you have this photo open, we can begin adding our textures. So to do that, I'm going to come up to the file menu and choose Place Embedded from the drop down here. Now here what we're looking for is 037.jpg. Let's go ahead and open that JPEG up in Photoshop and just click on Place. And now you'll notice that it's brought into our document automatically as a smart object with the name of the file. And we're just going to make a few transformations here. So the first thing I'm going to do is hold the control key, click on the image and choose Flip Vertical. And now I'm going to move my cursor over any of the four corners of the bounding box and just drag outwards while holding Alt, Option, and Shift a little bit. Now I want to make this span the whole width of the image, so to do that I'm going to move my cursor over either the left or the right handle, click, hold the Alt, Option key, and just drag outwards until there's just a little bit of the border showing on both sides. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the top, although this time, because the bottom looks pretty good, we only want to extend it from the top. So instead of holding Alt, Option, I'll click and hold the Control key. And now I'm just going to be scaling it up from that one side. Okay, and you can rotate it a bit if you'd like here as well, make any other adjustments. Maybe tap it over a few times with the arrow keys, and then go ahead and press return once you're happy with the size and the placement. Now we're going to change the blending mode from normal to darken. And you can see that we've already started to blend this texture a little bit with our photo. Let's go ahead and add a few more things to it. Let's double click on the texture layer over here, and we're going to add a color overlay. Now for the settings here, I want to change the blend mode to overlay, reduce the opacity to about 35%, and for the fill color, we're going to enter the hex value 0B0FAC, then go ahead and click OK. And now you can see over here you have this little effects icon and the eyeball showing you your color overlay. And you can just turn that on and off by clicking on the eye here. Okay, so from there what we're going to do is change the color of this a little bit because we want to apply an overall tint to the whole image. So to do that, I'm going to hold the Alt Option key, come down here and click on my adjustment layer icon, and now choose Gradient Map. Now here we want to check off the option that says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask, and then click OK. Now under the Properties, you'll see this black to white gradient. This is where we can go ahead and edit the colors. So let's click on that to bring up the Gradient Editor. Now once you're inside here, you'll see this strip, and there's two squares, one on the top and one on the bottom, on both sides. Now the top square represents the opacity. We want to make sure that these are both at 100% opacity, and the bottom squares represent the fill colors. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to change the fill color on the left first. So just click on this little swatch here, and now we're going to enter the hex value 2D2D5F, which is kind of a deep purple color. Go ahead and click OK, and now double click on the white color fill on the bottom right. And for this, let's go ahead and enter a hex value of 726, 4B3, which is a lighter shade of purple, and then go ahead and click OK. Now let's blend this a little bit more. So I'm now going to double click on the gradient map adjustment layer. And in here you have your basic blending options. Now I'm not sure if you guys have used this before, but this is a pretty cool way to kind of get some interesting results when you're blending textures and photos and things like that. And keep in mind guys, even though we are using a landscape photo, these techniques and tricks will work on just about any kind of image that you want to use. Okay, so if you look down here at the bottom where it says blend if gray, you have two rows, basically. So you'll notice on each side we've got these arrows or these tabs. And you can see as I move these around, it's kind of changing the image a little bit. But there's actually a way to split these in half. And you can see that there's a little line in the center of both of them. So to do that, all you need to do is hold the Alt Option key and then click and drag one of these tabs over. Now for this, I'm going to move this right tab over until it's set to about 82 or 83. And then for the bottom, I'm going to hold the Alt Option key again and now split the tabs on the right and slide this one over until it's set to about 55. 
Okay, and you can kind of see what's happening in the background. It's letting some of the original colors from the photo show through. So if I just turn off the preview real quick, you can kind of see before everything is purple, but now that we've blended it, we're getting some of the lighter colors and, and the original colors back in. All right, so click OK, and now we have our first blended texture. Let's go back up to the file menu now, choose Place Embedded, and this time we're going to import the 16 JPEG file, choose Place, Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing where we move our cursor over any of the four corners, hold the Alt Option key and scale it up. So now it's nice and big. And we're just going to slide it up a little bit too. Go ahead and press Return. And now let's change the blending mode of this layer to Color Dodge. Now if you just check out some of these blending modes for a second, you'll see that there's like lines kind of dividing each of these into groups. And it's kind of interesting because these are kind of similar effects. So what I mean by that is these first maybe, you know, five or six here in this group, darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, and darker color, those are all going to create sort of a darker effect with your image. Conversely, the next group down, lighten screen, color dodge, linear dodge, and lighter color, those are usually going to brighten the textures or bring out the highlights. And, you know, so on and so forth. Some of these other ones create, um, you know, very interesting effects, some of which are hard to uh, describe, but I encourage you guys to experiment with a few of these to see what kind of effects and results they produce. So now that we've changed this texture layer to color dodge, you can see that it's quite bright. So what we want to do is apply a levels adjustment layer so that we can kind of crush it and only get the highlights. All right, so what I want to do is hold the Alt Option key, click on the adjustment layer icon, choose levels, and now check off this box that says use previous layers to create clipping mask, hit OK, and now you'll see that you have a clipping mask applied just like we have on our gradient map. And all that means is that any adjustments that we make here are only going to affect the layer directly below it. So here in the properties now for our levels, let's go ahead and just move this slider on the left side in towards the right until it's set to about 190. And you can see what's happening here. It's basically you know, making it so only the lightest colors in the texture show through so that most of the black is now invisible because of the blending mode that the texture is on. All right, what I mean by that is since this texture layer is on color dodge, it's only showing the lightest parts of the image. So when we crush that with the levels, those lighter parts are fewer, right? There's not as many light parts now that are visible. But that's nice because it actually leaves more room to see the photo beneath. Hopefully that makes sense. But again, I encourage you guys to kind of experiment with the blending modes and some of these adjustment layers together because they truly are some of the most powerful tools available to you in Photoshop. So now what we want to do is add a few global adjustments. So I'm just going to close the properties for a second here, come back down to the adjustment layer icon, and now choose black and white. Now what we can do to get more contrast here, instead of just having everything black and white, is either try overlay or soft light. I actually like soft light quite a bit. And now if I poke the eyeball out, you can kind of see that it's adding a lot of contrast. So let's just reduce that effect to about 50% which you can do by either manually dragging the opacity slider, as I've done here, or by simply pressing the number five on the keyboard. Now, th for this adjustment layer, we didn't want a clipping mask because we want it to affect everything below. All right, so I like to call these kind of your, your global adjustments because it's affecting everything on a global level. All right, so come back down, and this time add a hue saturation adjustment layer. For this, we're gonna move the hue to about negative seven, bring in a little bit more blue, and I'm just going to boost the saturation a bit, maybe anywhere from like 3 to 6, 3 to 5 looks pretty good. Okay, and then you can see again, it's kind of a subtle effect, but it creates a nice tone and a nice look. Now we're going to do that one more time where we come down, add a curves adjustment layer this time. And we're going to put a point right here in the middle of the grid. And I'm just going to move it maybe down into the right a little bit. And if I expand this, you guys can see you have an input and an output setting. So let's just manually type in an input of 140 and an output of about 117. And now you can kind of see the effect that that has. That gets a little bit more contrast in there, but it really allows us to play with the, the luminosity or the, the black and white in the image. Okay, but one other really cool thing about curves is that if you come to this menu here where it says RGB, if you click it, you can target all the reds, all the greens, or all of the blues in your image. So I'm going to go ahead and select the reds for a second. And you can see how our grid has now changed. It's now, you know, got this pink histogram in the background and it has this red line indicating the highlights or all of the red colors, I should say. 
So if I just click and move this up, you guys can kind of see the effect that it's having. And it applies this kind of interesting effect. All right, so you can do this with all the colors in here, red, green, or blue. But for now, all I'm going to do is create another point in the middle here. And for this one, I'm going to move the input to about 134. And let's make the output 127. We've just modified the reds a little bit along with the contrast. So now what you can do, you can come in here, maybe select one of your textures if you want. And you can just kind of move it around and see how it looks, you know, on the image. I kind of like the way that we had it over here. But what you can also do is maybe scale it up. Hold the Alt Option key, drag outwards, right? Play around with the, the size and the positioning a little bit. And now you can see where we get some of this nice texture on top. So we've just layered two different textures, the glass plate negatives from Blue Line Design, on top of our photo. So I'm going to select the very top layer, the Curves Adjustment, hold Shift, and select our first texture. So you have everything except for the original photo selected. And then press Command Control G to put it into a group folder. Double click the group one text and just call this texture effects. So now when I poke that eyeball out again, you can see the before, our original photo, and the after, the easy, cool effects that we have created, and the after. So as you can see, guys, you can create some really cool and interesting effects just using a few textures and a nice photo. And again, you know, I encourage you guys to experiment with the blending modes, the adjustment layers, and everything else because it really offers you a lot of cool possibilities. Also, the blending options that we covered here today are extremely useful as well. So this was a shorter tutorial, but I just wanted to show you guys some of these cool tips and tricks that you can use. So that way, when you get your hands on the totally extensive textures and patterns bundle, you'll have a lot of fun. You'll have a lot of great stuff at your disposal to play around with. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial today. Hopefully you picked up a few new tricks along the way. And as always, we would love to see what you guys do with this bundle and with these techniques. My name is Eric Vasquez. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.